Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to show how you can quickly storage charge 1S LiPos. And the reason I'm making this video is because we have had storm after storm in the UK for the last five weeks and it feels like it's rained for an entire year. So I've been flying a lot of 1S Tiny Whoops and it's important to storage charge these LiPos because they don't have much longevity in the first place and keeping them fully charged or undercharged for a long period of time is only going to accelerate their demise. But I found that all of my 1S Tiny Whoop chargers don't storage charge 1S LiPos, and I've got a lot of dedicated Tiny Whoop chargers. Maybe there is one out there that does storage charge 1S LiPos, but to my knowledge, there isn't. And if there is one that storage charges 1S LiPos, it's certainly not going to do it as fast as the method that I have come up with. Now I'm not just talking about discharging a fully charged 1S LiPo to a storage voltage because that's easy. Tiny Whoop themselves sell a PH2 1S discharger, although they're pretty expensive for what they do in my opinion. You can only discharge one LiPo at a time, and a 300 milliamp hour LiPo will take over two hours to discharge with one of those things. The second option for storage discharging is to get one of the UR UAV LiPo killers which also has a storage discharge option but it will still take up to an hour to storage charge one LiPo. Of course you could do short flights with all of your fully charged LiPos and keep checking the voltage until the LiPo reaches a storage voltage between 3.8 to 3.85 volts but I am way too impatient for that. So what if I were to tell you that I've come up with a method of storage discharging 6 1S LiPos in 3.5 minutes and storage charging 6 depleted LiPos in a around four minutes. Well, before I get into that, I should say that if you only fly Tiny Whoops and only have 1S chargers, then you won't be able to use these methods, which is fine because as I have just said, there are 1S dischargers. So if you have a depleted battery, you can charge it back up to around four volts and then use the slower dischargers to get it to a storage voltage. But if you like to enjoy all flavors of the hobby, like me, then you probably have a hobby grade charger, such as this Hobbymate H6, which can charge up to 6L LiPos, or one of the ISDT chargers, where both can charge 1S LiPos. And there are some parallel boards out there that have PH2 connectors, so you can charge multiple 1S LiPos at the same time, and also storage charge them. The only problem with that is these tiny 1S LiPos have such a small capacity, even if you have the most powerful charger in the world, it will only storage charge them at a very low current, whether they are depleted batteries or fully charged batteries, because unlike our Tiny Whoops, a charger will only discharge or charge a LiPo at a current draw up to the voltage we are trying to store it at, in this case 3.8 volts or 3.85 volts. So I've come up with a couple of solutions. Rather than using a parallel board, I've made up a bunch of series connectors, essentially turning the 1S LiPos into a 2 or 6S pack. This means that each individual cell can be monitored by the charger and balanced more efficiently. I'll overlay some footage of how I made the 6S series connector. I basically had a dud 6S LiPo which I stole the balance connector from. Some balance connectors have weird colours but in this case the black wire is the negative so you also need to solder the negative wire to your XT60 to this one as well as connecting it to the negative of the PH2 connector. Then the positive of the connector solders to the negative of the next balance cable which you repeat until you get to the last positive connector where you'll also need to solder the positive to your XT60 connector. 
I have to say it was a pain to make up, especially getting all of the heat shrink right. And Banggood actually sell this connector in a 4 and 6S configuration. But they are sold out of everything thanks to the coronavirus. So I decided to make one up of my own. Plus the Banggood version uses an XT30 connector and not an XT60 connector, which isn't too much of an issue, but most of the hobby grade multi-rotor chargers use XT60 connectors. There is a downside to this method because you can't just remove one LiPo and it's now a 5S series connector. You have to use six 1S LiPos attached to it, which is why I created a 2S version and also a 1S only version. Now at this point you could actually use your hobby grade charger to storage discharge and storage charge your 1S LiPos, but it would still take hours because if you are storage charging, then I as I mentioned earlier, the small capacity of the 1S LiPos causes the charger to almost instantly reach the storage charge voltage, so it limits the current. The same goes for discharging because most chargers just have a bunch of resistors like the UR UAV discharger boards, and the energy is converted into heat, which again takes a long time to do. Some chargers have something called regen storage charge, where it will discharge one LiPo and and fill up another but I don't really class that as storage charging unless the LiPo you are transferring the energy to also reaches a storage charge by doing so. So to fast discharge the 1S LiPos to a storage voltage, I used my trusty ISDT FD200. And my LiPos could not survive without this thing. Everyone should have one. It's worth its weight in gold. But some of you might be thinking, the FD200 doesn't have a balance connector. And you are correct. But if you are discharging a bunch of fully charged LiPos, then the voltages are going to be all the same, if not similar. So it doesn't matter, but it can only fast discharge 2S LiPos and above, so a 1S parallel board wouldn't cut it with this device. But with my 6S series connector, I can select 6S in the app, set the current to a safe 5 amps, and the battery's storage charged in 3.5 minutes. And if you have any doubt to whether it discharges the LiPos equally, not all of these 1S LiPos are the same capacity. Yet when I plugged the series connector back into the charger, it had storage charged them all to an acceptable voltage. Now you might be thinking that is too quick to discharge six 1S LiPos and isn't that as damaging as putting them through a flight? And the answer is no, because I'm only discharging them to a storage voltage from 4.2 volts each cell to around 3.8 volts, whereas a full flight would last three and a half minutes perhaps and you'd be landing at around the 3.4 volt mark. So in short, the answer is no. But what about depleted batteries? How do we get around the charger limit in the current when the voltage reaches the storage voltage? Well, it's actually pretty simple. All we need to do is set the charger to charge rather than storage charge, which releases the limiter and allows for a higher current charge. I waited until the individual voltages reached around 4.1 volts at the three minute mark and then stopped the charge. And because we have the balance cable, I can now go into the storage charge option and it took just a few seconds to reach a storage voltage. And just as before, you might be thinking that is way too fast to charge six 1S LiPos, but again, I'm storage charging them and not fully charging them. So in this case, the starting voltage was around 3.3 volts, which is about the voltage I'd expect to see after a full flight. Then I'm storage charging them to around 3.8 volts, so I'm only charging them by 0.5 of a volt, so no, again, it is not too fast. Now to some people this is going to sound very labour intensive and quite expensive just to storage charge your LiPos more quickly. But I once spent an entire week storage charging LiPos using the slower methods when I charged a load of batteries and ended up not flying. Whereas this new method took around 8 minutes to storage charge 6 depleted and fully charged LiPos and to me that is worth it, especially when time is your currency. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you found it useful then I'll put a link to my Patreon in the video description as well as a pinned comment. And maybe the series connector might be in stock at Banggood by the time this video goes out. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.